tutorial where we'll be deploying the reaction platform on DigitalOcean. First thing you want to do is to go to this repository in the reaction GitHub account and we'll just follow along and uh, deploy this. Should be pretty fast. So you can go and uh, clone this repository to your local computer. We're assuming that a developer is using a Mac computer for this tutorial. And the requirements are that you'll need a DigitalOcean droplet. You can use other uh, AWS uh, and other providers. Uh, for this particular tutorial, we'll be using DigitalOcean. You'll also need a registered domain. I'm using DigitalOcean as well. You can use uh, DigitalOcean's DNS services uh, for free. Uh, I'm using this simply because they support CAA's uh, records, which is the next requirement. And you can uh, register your domain in GoDaddy and still use the DNS services that DigitalOcean provides. There are links here to how to do that. And Docker, Docker Compose, um, these are the dependencies that will be installed on the server. So first thing is we need to create a DigitalOcean droplet. And uh, there's uh, many tutorials on how to do that on the DigitalOcean um, website. So I'm not going to go into that. So let's just go and take a high level overview of the uh, services that we'll be installing on this droplet. We'll install the Reaction API, which is used to, to, to manage the core functionality, products, orders, etc. We'll install the storefront, which is our example storefront that provides an interface for customers to purchase products from uh, their, from uh, from a store. And the Reaction Admin, which is used for shop operators to, to, to manage products, etc. And Hydra will be another service that is used for, by Reaction to, to manage uh, OAuth tokens. Uh, and <clears throat> Reaction Identity, which is a media application that uses uh, we use as the account service for this application, for, this, uh, for our platform. Uh, you can take a look at this tutorial, uh, this uh, diagram in more detail at your convenience, but it essentially just shows the flow of data coming in from a client request, going into traffic, which will be our router that will route traffic to all the different services in the back end. Um, uh, so the main the main flow will be that it will go to traffic, and they'll route it to either the storefront, or the API, or the admin UI, and everything kind of works together okay. in, in a communication network. Uh, so to get started, we'll need a, a subdomain that you uh, a domain that you have registered that you control the DNS uh, for, and we'll use all these different uh, subdomains for each one of the services. The API will be at API dot whatever your domain is, storefront, admin, hydra, identity, traffic. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you'll need to have a DNS provider that can uh, uh, that supports CA records. And if you don't know what that is, there's a link here you can go and take a look. And in particular, we'll, be, we'll need to have a wildcard certificate, and you can add those in your DigitalOcean account. Pretty straightforward, it's just like any other DNS record. Um, and you'll also need a DigitalOcean auth token that, that will be used to generate SSL certificates for all the different services. So you can go and take a look at this link and see how you can generate your personal access token. And <clears throat> we'll be seeing how it gets used later in this tutorial. And so let's get to the configuration of our server. So the basic idea is that we'll have uh, a remote server, in this case a digital ocean droplet, that will be managing from our local computer via Ansible. And I've created a playbook that will install all the dependencies and then install the reaction platform on it. And now this is all will be automated, so all you got to do is 
I execute a command and everything else will be taken care of. Uh, and also here you, you should uh, definitely create a firewall on the DigitalOcean infrastructure so you can avoid any unwanted access to your node. So the first thing that we we'll want to do is create a DigitalOcean droplet. I'm not going to go into uh, that detail, but you can go and do that and, uh, on your dashboard. And then you'll just copy the IP address of the droplet that was created and then just log in with its command to verify that you're able to connect and that's set up correctly. Next, we'll uh, prepare the control node, which is a concept that Ansible uh, has where you have control node, in our case, our developer computer, or Mac in this case, and a server, which is will be our DigitalOcean droplet. Uh, so if you don't have Ansible yet, install it by using this command, brew, homebrew, brew install Ansible, or if you don't have homebrew, you can install it clicking this link and following directions. And then also install Python 3 to avoid some warnings. So now we, we got to, after you've installed Ansible, we'll need to configure the communication and the host um, so that our local developer computer can communicate with our remote server. And to do that, we'll use a concept that Ansible has called an inventory file. So you'll need to create this inventory file first. Uh, in my case, I've already created it, so you can um, just create it with this command, and then you'll see, let's uh, do that here real quick. So you just create that file and then add a server. In my case, I'm calling this the reaction server. And a, uh, this is just another configuration that setting up the Python 3 as the interpreter. So let's get out of here, go back to tutorial. So go ahead and do that. And uh, now we'll need to configure our host so that the reaction server host name will resolve to the IP address. So to do that, execute uh, this command and you'll see that you'll need to add a, an entry for whatever IP address your droplet has um, for this and then add a host name. I'm using reaction server. You can use whatever you want. Once you've done that, let's just test out that communication is, is working correctly. So we'll do this test command and ping the uh, remote server. And as you can see, it's a success. So the communication is all set up. Now, what we'll need to do is, you need to copy this this, this repository. And uh, once you've done that on your local computer, you'll need to open that, those files, open this repository locally in your computer, and you need to set up some variables for this installation. And most importantly will be your DigitalOcean auth token, which we talked about. You can get from the DigitalOcean API configuration. An email address, so at Let's Encrypt will send you notifications regarding SSL certificates and your domain, the registered domain that you um, that you own, control the rights to. And all the DNS records, uh, you'll need to add a records for everyone, every one of these uh, subdomains to resolve to your domain, and also add a CAA record for that CA record that's a wild certificate for that um, for that domain as well. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm here locally, I've cloned the repository, and you can see there's a lot of different files here, but we'll focus on the playbook first, which is what automates the installation and configuration of our remote server. And all you have to change is your digital token, just Place it with the actual token here, your domain, your email. Everything else should just leave it as is. And if you want to take a look at what are the different uh, tasks that will be executed, you can look at this. It's uh, essentially just installing whatever dependencies uh, Reaction Platform has and getting um, the actual platform. Uh, 
uh, copied over to the server and then configuring all the environment variables, etc., and then starting the services. Um, and that's what all these files here are for configuring the routing. We'll be using the traffic as mentioned earlier. So this is the basic configuration for the traffic router. You don't really need to change any of this. Um, so this is the uh, configuration for traffic, for the traffic service, the router or proxy. And uh, you don't need to change any of this as well. It'll still be automated. The token will be added here. And you can kind of take a look at this if you want to learn more about how the routing works. And essentially, it's just using labels to configure routers and SSL certificate generation. And each one of the services, for example, the reaction service, will have its own set of labels that will be get copied over to the corresponding um, folder. And this is all, you don't need to change any of this because the domain here will be substituted for your actual domain by the playbook. So now let's go to your local, um, local proxy traffic repository on your local computer. And the next step will be to actually execute the playbook by executing this command. And that is the next step here. So just copy that, paste it here, and it will start to install all the dependencies on the remote server. I already ran that command here just for the sake of this tutorial. And you can see that it starts to gather information. And one, one thing to note that before you execute this command, make sure that you, you have substituted this, this variables. Otherwise, uh, the installation will fail. So make sure that you have your token, your domain, and your email. And once you have that, uh, execute the command, and it will start to uh, run all the commands. Let me just simulate here. It runs 53 tasks, and it says everything was OK. So now we can log into the uh, Plug into the to the remote server and see how things look on the remote server. So my particular IP address, well, so let's see. That's let's log on to the server and you can see that I used the username reaction because that is what it's created by default. So SSH um, reaction and uh, so we're here on the server and we can take a look at the overall there, there might be some things that you need to do which i had to do which is restart the server up make some up update the all the dependencies with uh with by executing apt updates and uh, and apt upgrade and then just restart the server. And then once it gets restarted, you'll see that it will be necessary to, to start the services, all the reaction platform services. And so I'll show you how to do it in a second. But I just want to mention here that at the home directory, you'll see uh, that the proxy is here, which is the router. You don't, really need to, you don't need to change anything there. But if we go into the reaction platform, you'll see all the all the repositories necessary to run the reaction platform. Storefront, reaction API, admin, Hydra, and identity. So now we, we have installed a utility to see what how the services are running. So if we execute lazy Docker, you'll see that actually some of the services have exited. So we have PI is not running, identity, reaction, etc. So that is because the server was restarted. So to fix that, we'll just go into the reaction platform and just execute make start, which will start all the services for us.
Let's wait for that to start. Let's go back and actually lazy docker, which is installed for convenience. You can see now that all the services are running. And uh, oops, exit it. So we can see this example storefront is running correctly. Admin is running correctly. Identity, API, etc. And so we can now go and take a look at the, the API and see how it's running. So my example was uh, this domain. So we'll go to the API dat dot your domain GraphQL and can see that the um, the API is running correctly. And I already created a user. So you'll need to do that before you can actually get the primary shop ID because by default there's no um, there's no there's no shop. So the first thing you'll need to do is you'll come to the screen and register a user and click register and uh, I'll take you to the shop to the admin and you can create a, your, your shop. In my case I already created that so I'm just gonna log in. There's my reaction admin with all the SSO and identity services working correctly. So that's uh, we can see that this is working so now execute primary shop ID getting the shop ID and that's that's uh, our installation so one thing that I want to show is that we can actually connect using uh, VS codes remote development a plugin if you don't have that you can install that from the extension manager I already have it installed and I'm connected to my my droplet and you can do that by going here connect to host you need to edit your host and add the IP address of the droplet once you've done that you can connect to it in my case I'm already connected and I've loaded up the reaction platform directory and the proxy and just I believe this will be very helpful to see how things are configured um, you can see that for example for the uh, reaction API we have the environment variable here and just some variables see how they're all configured and how they'll work together for the admin same thing we'll look and all of this is done by the by the playbook all the variables get set correctly how they should be the identity Hydra API etc so you can use this as a reference to, to, to solve issues of how to get everything working together. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please uh, find us on Gitter or create an issue on this repository. And thank you for watching.